Imagine you are at a red light. After a few seconds, the light turns green and you begin to speed up in the car. Whenever we speed up, we can feel ourselves get pushed into our seats a bit. Whenever you feel that push, it means you're accelerating. Acceleration occurs when you pick up speed, and your acceleration is a measure of how quickly you're gaining speed. Speed is a similar word to velocity. The difference between speed and velocity is that speed is how fast an object is moving or changing position, and velocity is how fast that object is moving and in what direction. Position tells us the location of an object. In this video, we are going to talk about how acceleration, velocity, and position are all related to each other, as well as some applications of this knowledge that help scientists in the real world. Imagine you're in a car that's traveling at a constant speed of 60 miles per hour down a long, straight highway. After one hour, you will have traveled 60 miles. After a second hour, you'll have gone 120 miles. After a third hour, 180 miles, and so on. We can get an idea of this movement graphically by plotting miles against hours like this. Then we can connect the dots to make a line. Another way we could describe this line is miles traveled as a function of time. The height of this line at a given positive x value or time value tells us how far the car has driven from the starting point. This is why such a line is often referred to as a position function. The slope of this line is unsurprisingly 60, since the line rises by 60 units for every horizontal unit. Because the slope is 60 and we know that the car is moving at a speed of 60 miles per hour, we can understand that the slope of the position function gives us the car's velocity. This concept can even be applied when a position function is not a straight line. For example, if a tire starts rolling down a hill and has the position function y equals x squared, where x represents seconds passed and y represents feet traveled, then we can find the tire's velocity at any given time by finding the slope of the position function at that time. From our study of calculus so far, we understand that slope is often a keyword for derivative problems. So it should come as no surprise that the quickest way to find the velocity of an object from its position function is by taking the derivative of the position function. In the case of the tire rolling downhill, since its position function is y equals x squared, its velocity function is equal to its derivative. So its velocity is equal to y prime, which is equal to the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Once you have taken the derivative to acquire the object's velocity function, you can plug in any x value or time value to get the value of the velocity at that exact moment. For example, we can find the velocity of the tire after 5 seconds by plugging in 5 for x. So here we have our velocity function, y prime. But we can also write this as v of x. So if we have our velocity function and we want to find the velocity at 5 seconds, all we have to do is plug in 5 for x. So v of 5 is equal to 2 times 5, which is equal to 10 feet per second. Remember how we talked about acceleration in the beginning of this video? Acceleration is a measure of how velocity changes. Since velocity is a measure of how position changes, and we can find velocity by taking the derivative of the position function, it may come as no surprise that we can find the acceleration by taking the derivative of the velocity function. So since the tire has a velocity function of v of x equals 2x, its acceleration function is equal to the derivative of 2x. So the acceleration function, a of x, is equal to y double prime, or the derivative of 2x, which is 2. The unit for the tire's acceleration is feet per second squared. Because we're considering how the velocity in feet per second is changing per second. So if you have the velocity function of an object, you can take its derivative to find the acceleration function. Similarly, if you have an object's position function, you can use derivatives to find both its velocity and acceleration functions. Let's try an example. Joseph launches a model rocket with an altimeter on it to record its height during flight. Once the rocket returns to the ground, Joseph determines that the height of the rocket in meters is given by the function h of t is equal to negative 4.5 t squared plus 90 t, where t is seconds after liftoff. Find the velocity function of the rocket and determine at what time velocity equals zero. Then find the acceleration function of the rocket and determine what the acceleration is at t equals 2 seconds. First, we need to find the velocity function of the rocket. To do this, we just need to take the derivative of its position function, 
which in this case is the height function. So we have the height function h of t is equal to negative 4.5 t squared plus 90 t. So our velocity is equal to the derivative of our height function. So the derivative of this would be negative 9t plus 90. Now we want to know at what time velocity equals zero. To do this, all we need to do is set negative 9t plus 90 equal to zero and then solve. So if we do this, we'll have negative 9t plus 90 equals zero. And we can solve by subtracting 90 from both sides. That gives us negative 9t is equal to negative 90. And then divide by negative 9 on both sides to get t is equal to 10. So when t is equal to 10 seconds, we know that its velocity is equal to zero. This is where the rocket reaches its highest point and is about to fall back toward the ground. Next, we need to know the rocket's acceleration function. Since acceleration can be found by taking the derivative of the velocity function, we know that acceleration is equal to negative nine. So our acceleration is equal to negative nine, and our units will be meters per second squared. Since this is a constant value, it doesn't change from one second to another. The acceleration of the rocket at two seconds is still then equal to negative nine. Whenever you have an object's position function, you can easily find its velocity function by taking the derivative of the position function. By extension, you can also find an object's acceleration function by taking the derivative of its velocity function. And to find the object's position, velocity, or acceleration at a specific time, just plug that time into the respective function and simplify. I hope that this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and happy studying.